Now while we're waiting for the glue to dry, I'm going to refer you to the strings. In your packet, you're going to have a variety of strings, some clear strings, and some colored strings. More about that in just a moment. What's important is that you turn to page 12 in your instruction manual. This is something to be kept because it has all the information about which strings go where. And in case you ever break a string or something happens, you'll be able to tell me to send you a particular replacement string. The knot is described here on this page, but let me demonstrate this for you if I can. We're going to close in on it. I'm using a red string just because it's a little easier to see. And we are going to use this and make a string knot. It's a little tricky, but once you make a couple, you won't have any trouble from there on. So I'm going to keep it here close to the table. And we want to make a loop. Very simple. Turn it out and make a loop. You can see, of course, my fingers are in the way. Oh, there we go. You can see the loop. And I want to make a double loop. So the same thing on the other side. Turn it out so that we have rabbit ears. Now, the most important thing here is to make your loops. You can see that there's a little connector in between the two loops. And that connector needs to be on the same side of both loops so that it will create the knot that we're looking for. Once you've got your two rabbit ears, your two loops, then take the right hand loop, put it through the other loop, grab it with your fingers, and pull on the loose end. What that does is begin to tighten the uh, second loop, the loop that was in my left hand, and cinch it up so that it grabs the loop on what was in my right hand. And I'm going to pull that so it's relatively tight, but not super tight. Now, when you get to the thinner strings, you need to use what I call a toggle. And we have some material here. You take your string nippers, and all you have to do is nip off little segments of it. I have a little pile here that I've begun to, to do. You're going to need 13 of these. Now, this red string I used just so you could see it clearly, but I'm going to use a, a, a one of the thinner strings that I have here. And you can see I've already put a toggle in one of them so you can see the final result. But let me walk you through this again. I'll take the other end of this string. I'm going to make a right hand loop. Oh boy, this is in the way. So we shall take care of that summarily. <laughs> so right hand loop, left hand loop. Make sure that the crossover there is on the same side of both loops. Right hand loop goes into the left hand loop. Pull it down, but on the thinner strings, don't pull it tight yet. Here is where the toggle comes in handy. The reason for the toggle is once these are on the harp and you begin to tension the strings, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, tension on them. Uh, you don't want the knot to pull through the hole in the string rib. And so we take the toggle. There's a little trick here because sometimes these toggles want to fall out. If you just put it there where you think uh, it, it might be easiest to insert it, the danger is that once you're finagling with it, trying to get everything uh, uh, ready, then uh, it's going to fall out. Here is the little trick inside information I will share with you. If you take that loop and you squeeze it just a little bit, you can see it. Uh, there's a little trigger there. The tail end moves up. What that does is open up a little opening here in the knot. The toggle goes through there. And when you let go, whoopsie, it's going to fall out. But when I let go of that, then it's going to stay. I want that to uh, be secure. And then what I do is grab it, pull the other end of the string. That tightens the knot. 
and that will be there for uh, a, a goodly amount of time as we go through all the stringing of all the uh, entire harp. So that's it. We're going to next show you how to put the strings up to the tuning pins. So you might want to get your tuning wrench and your string nippers handy, the two tools you will need for our next step. Now that we've glued the frame to the box, we can remove the blue clamping bands and save them for some other chore. And now we're going to do the most exciting part, I think, and that's stringing the instrument. You have in your kit a packet of all the strings that you will need. They are labeled in terms of which string goes where by their gauges. And I would refer you again to page 12 in your instruction booklet with all the string gauges uh, and their numbers and where they go on the harp. Do not lose this. This is very valuable to keep. And over on the opposite page here on the next page, 13, is the procedure that we are going to walk through now. So I've already put three strings on my harp just to facilitate that. And I'm going to start with the red C040. I think you can see the red string a little bit better as we go through this, so that's why I've chosen to go ahead and do that. This goes into the fourth string hole, and I'm going to put it through the face of the instrument. You can't see this, but you don't need to. And I'm going to pass it through so that I can pull it out of the back. Now I've given you plenty of string in your little original loops, more than you need. So we'll go through that in just a moment. Again, the knot, loop, loop. Put the right hand loop through the back of the left hand loop. I'm just grabbing all this to kind of keep it into conformation and pull the knot tight. And that's how it should look. Once you've done that, go ahead and pull it from the outside. I like to make sure that knot is uh, secure. Yes, you're going to have to do a little juggling here of the instrument. You can figure out what best suits your setup. Now once I have the knot done and I pass it through, I like to just kind of grab the string. Don't crease it if you can help doing that and just kind of pull it uh, tight so that the knot cinches up a little bit more. We're going to go up now to the appropriate uh, tuning peg and I'm going to, if you can see, go just a little bit beyond, about one inch beyond the top of the neck. And that is all you need in order to cinch it around the appropriate tuning peg. Using your nippers, you can get rid of the little extra, take the end of the string, turn the tuning peg around so that the hole is easily available, and we will just insert this into the uh, hole, push it through, and I want to leave just a little extra, a, t a tail out here because that will come in handy in terms of making sure that string stays where you want it. Tuning wrench, I'm going to go ahead and get a couple of turns on it. And you can see that little extra tail I've left on there. I want to turn the string so that the string comes above that little tail. Because as we turn it just a little bit more, then, I, in order to make that string not slip and stay there forever, it's really wise. You don't have to do this, but it's a good step. If you can see, I'm going to push this string down so that it captures the little tail of the string and will hold it in place. As I is still not quite really tight yet, so as I continue to turn the string, I'm going to take my thumb and push down between the bridge and the pin. 
I'm going to depress the string in that little gap there so that the string will break or uh, bend over the bridge firmly. You want the string to be nice and firm over the bridge. You can see I pushed that string down a little bit and we can get some tension on it. You're not ready to do any tuning yet, but now we have that string on there. All the strings work the same way, but you remember the lesson with the toggle. In fact, we'll just take a little short break here and I'll put a string, a thin string on further up the harp just to remind you how the toggle works. Now we're going to skip ahead and put on a thinner string that requires a toggle. You can see from your chart on page 12, that begins with the blue pitch of F, the O32. From there on up into the scheme of uh, pitches, going high and skinnier in the strings, you will need toggles on all of these strings to keep them from pulling through the hole in the string rib once we have the tension fully uh, applied. So the blue 032, same thing as we just did with the red string, and it goes through the front of the instrument, pull it through the back. Again, I think you're well versed on the knot. Right hand loop, left hand loop, right hand loop goes through the back of the left hand loop, grab it and pull it tight. Oh, but don't pull it too tight because we need to put the toggle in. Now, as you may remember, the once you get this knot uh, halfway completed, there's this loop here, and if I squeeze on that loop, we have a little trigger here that uh, opens up the loop in an appropriate way for our toggle. So if you just put the toggle in where it seems kind of obvious, it'll probably fall out as you continue up the gamut. So I want this uh, trigger to hold that toggle in there. So I'm going to squeeze that loop and makes a new little opening and put this toggle through there. And when I release it, you can see that the little trigger falls down onto the toggle and holds it nice and firm. Then grabbing it, pulling it, make sure it's nice and tight. Arrange your toggle so it's right halfway through. Pull out the loose end. We're back up here and one inch from the top of the frame. We'll trim off the extra string, get our hole situated so that it's easy to access. Put our blue 032 through there. Oh, it's being a little resistant. Let me see if I can come through the other side. If that can happen, so you need to be patient. Patience is a key to the kingdom. Get it through there. You see I left that little extra again. And as I turn the peg, the main part of the string here goes above that little tail. Turn it around, but not too tight, so that I can push the string down with my fingernails and capture the tail underneath the winding. At that point, I'm pushing down here between the, the tuning peg and the bridge to get a good break over the bridge, nice and tight. And then you never start cranking the tuning wrench without monitoring how tight it's getting. Again, we're not ready to tune it yet, but get it to a, a tension, reasonable tension, where it uh, stabilizes. All right, now we have all our strings on. It's not going to sound like much <laughs> yet, but we're going to tune it up. And you only need a, a couple, three items for that. I'm going to suggest that you buy yourself 
a little digital tuner. Now these come in a variety of brands and uh, features. I don't believe we need anything with too many buttons. Uh, bells and whistles as they say. My favorite is this little Korg CA30. It's very simple. And of course your tuning wrench. Now the tuner can be worked in a, a couple of different ways. The on off switch and I can just get the sound. The sound that you hear is the pitch of C. Here on the harp, my red string is C. And we can simply do this by ear if you have uh, a good ear for tuning. So this is obviously below the pitch of the tuner. And now it's up to the C. It's not going to stay that way. You will need to retune these strings several times before the harp settles in. There is a variety of things that have to happen. The, as you tighten the strings, the string knot will have to cinch up tighter, so you're going to lose a little pitch that way. The nylon strings will stretch, and up here at the tuning pin also things will happen that is going to force you to retune it several times, maybe for a week or two. So get prepared for that. It's actually kind of fun once you create a rhythm of tuning and uh, get used to your particular method. If you don't want to do it by ear, there is a gizmo that I think is very useful. I've been to several harp festivals and just about everybody at the festival, harp players, harp manufacturers, use some sort of contact mic. This is a little microphone here and this little clip-on and the quarter inch jack will just go uh, right into the uh, input of my little cord tuner. This can be clipped on anywhere. I'm just going to clip it on up here further up on the uh, neck where it'll be out of the way. Now if we could close in on this, when I pluck that C string there is a little needle and when the needle is on this side it means that the pitch is flat. When the needle is on that side of the center, it means it's sharp and you have to make adjustments. The goal is to get the little needle there into the very center of it. There are gauges here that we don't need to go into detail about that will tell you how sharp or how flat it is. So let's go back to my C. I'm assuming that that C is now stretched and will be below the pitch. Let's see how that works. And I can see that the little needle there, the indicator, is indeed on the flat side. So I'm going to uh, put this down hopefully where you can see it. And of course I, I want to see it too. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna hold it actually and I'll do this all, all at once. It's much easier when I get it set up and do it on my own. And we'll see if we can get that needle to come up and situate itself right in the middle. And I think there we are. Is that apparent? And once that is done, you can move on to your next string. As you move through the whole gamut of the strings, the harp will continue to settle in have to go back to the beginning, do it again, it'll continue to settle in, go back to the beginning and do it in. A little patience and persistence is what you need in this process. There is nothing that sounds better than a well-tuned harp. What happens is when I pluck that C and everything is tuned, there are sympathetic resonances that happen throughout the instrument. In other words, strings will support each other and make a bigger, more resonant and sustained sound. So I wish you the best of luck on that 
And may I just take a moment, you've been through 12 steps here, been very persistent if you've gotten this far, and I just want to congratulate you, and I hope you enjoy your wearing harp. Thank you.